This is Public Resource. is the TDM Today Show with uh, Roger Magulis. Hey, Roger, how are you doing? Hey, and good morning, Carl. Good morning, good morning. So we talked about searching for plant names um, using unigrams, and we have a master list of all plant names. Um, so you basically you plug each one in and you look for them. Now, chemicals are different because there's no master list of chemicals. You make them up as you're going along. You have a trichlorohydromethyl glutamate or something like that. How do you find an entity such as a chemical name? Well, first you start off with just these entity recognition algorithms. Uh, I'm using one in Spacey. Spacey is a Python module and it's got a big task to do. It tries to do names of people, uh, locations, organizations, biological species, so it does do that, uh, and some scientific principles. Um, over time, what you can do is do some training to maybe figure out things that are most likely chemical names. There's certain prefixes and suffixes that work uh, on that. And people have been doing some work in something called BERT. Uh, BERT is a neural network based, uh, it's called a transformer, but it's something that looks at at text and tries to make sense of them. We haven't gone that far yet, but that would be a step where we could try to get chemical names in it. The other thing that you can do in our case is use things that point to a chemical name. We use the term gas chromatography in one of our queries as an indication that someone is doing something around chemical identification. So there's, I use the word keywords, but like probably directional words that let you know that something around chemicals might be being mentioned so that you can pull that out. And so you train it and then you check against ground truth. Um, you say that is a chemical name, that isn't a chemical name. How, how do you get it to be smarter? That is exactly how the training works. What you basically do is divide a corpus into two groups. You do one where you, and it's gonna be a small one, where humans go through and try to identify the chemical names and the other group a algorithm goes through and you compare those results and based on those results you provide feedback into the system and in a way kind of manually assign the things that um, the algorithm mixed missed and then statistically the algorithms go through and try to figure out how to do that in the future how to do a better job of that one thing I will say, it's never going to be perfect. And I'll just bring up, you know, it's very common in keyword stuff to think about things like disambiguation and what's called chunking, like the, how big a word is. But is the word water a chemical? Sometimes it is. Sometimes it isn't. You know, it's got all sorts of different meanings. Uh, sometimes something that's long, like a journal name, is a thing and that that is something that can be helpful for just thinking if there's chemistry involved, like the Journal of Chemistry that has plant names in it. You can make some assumptions that there's probably some something about chemicals in there, even if your entity extraction didn't find it well. So for unigrams, you, you've, you've got your list of all words. For entity recognition, you're very context dependent. You need to do training. It's a more difficult problem. It is. We actually tried to use uh, Spacey out of the box and this entity relationship. And one of the things it does is it creates a domain of things to be smaller, which is a nice thing to have. But there are still numbers, dates are also entities. So there's still a lot of stuff in there and we weren't really filtering uh, around that. It's a learning process and you know, we'll definitely get better at that over time. All right, that's Entity Recognition. This has been the TDM Today Show with Roger Magulis. Thank you, Roger. You're welcome. Take care. Our work at Public Resource is made possible by a generous grant from Arcadia. Arcadia, a charitable fund of Lisbeth Rousing and Peter Baldwin. Additional support provided by contributions from citizens like you. Thank you for your support. 
Public Resource is a 501c3 nonprofit corporation with headquarters in the state of California and dedicated to the principle that access to knowledge is a human right.